I mean, in some sense, this could just be a case of the lack of generalism in the sciences here, because each person studying one culture in one place in one time period, and they they know everything about it, but they're not necessarily there's nobody necessarily sitting back and looking at the whole thing and publishing on the whole thing all at once. Yeah. Well, also let's talk about let's talk about dates a little bit because are we so the you've kind of indicated that you think that the dating period is should be compressed. Yeah. Where if you have something that's 2500 BC that it might not actually be 2500 BC that there's some sort of like cyclicity in the way that we're recording dates where really it's closer in time which I think is it's possible, right? Like people make mis- it, 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 it's it's imaginable that you can make a mistake so fully and completely, and it just gets cycled forward that it just never gets reexamined. And so you add this time, and it's really difficult to be able to parse whether or not that time really is there, and your dating methods are yeah. incomplete. And so, okay. I mean, like, really, what what I'm saying is that there is there's something called the Hallstatt Plateau, right? And the Hallstatt Plateau is a known radiocarbon anomaly that starts around 500 to 600 BC. So anybody who's dealing with anything in the old world knows that as soon as you radiocarbon date something and get a result that says that it's 500 to, it goes all the way to 800 BC, if it's in that window of the Hallstatt Plateau, then we know that the radiocarbon date is not correct because we know there was some kind of a large atmospheric anomaly during that period that gives us incorrect radiocarbon dates. And so then what they do is they take um, dendrochronology, and they try to create on the intcal radiocarbon curve a correlation. So that's mm-hmm. like, well, if it gives us this day, then we know it could be kind of anywhere here. But if you get into the literature on the Hallstatt Plateau, there are lots of dates within that plateau that end up dating to 2000 BC. And this is known, it's in the literature, right? I can give a lot of sources, you can just look it up yourself, um, to examples within the Hallstatt Plateau where they know radiocarbon levels in the atmosphere just went crazy. So I believe that the Hallstatt Plateau, which is really kind of a newly, it's only within the last, you know, decade, a couple decades, that they've they've really recognized the Hallstatt Plateau and that they've gotten the word out to archaeologists to, hey, beware of things that are in the Hallstatt Plateau and make sure you use a correlation curve. Okay, so the Hallstatt Plateau is not actually a real place. It's a plateau. <laughs> I was like, where is that? That sounds German. Um, so it's it's a consistently flat area on graphs that plot radiocarbon dating against calendar dates. Yeah. And, and so the, it's basically... And Wikipedia say, says that, but that's actually not even true. Okay. Because if you get into better like literature, it's not just flat. There's spikes in there. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. There's at least two like major spikes that end up producing dates that date to 2000 BC. So even though the Wikipedia article likes to say, oh, well, it's just this flat area. It's like, that's that's not even true. Like I can produce a couple different um, studies where they know that there were massive spikes in radiocarbon dating, not just a flat plateau. And so basically, like the 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 plateau is in this graph that is calibrated date versus radiocarbon determination, and it's basically a perfectly straight line that descends from the top corner to the right corner, and then around the calibrated date from between eight hundred and four hundred BC, like what you're saying, the line gets screwed up. Instead of continuing along the same slope, it flattens, and then it has some features on it, which means that inside of that window, as you're getting dates, you're getting weird radiocarbon determination relative to yeah. actual date that isn't dates. isn't lying along the trend. Yeah, this and there's is what, yeah, go ahead. And there's also like a really weird there's a really weird sharp change in the curve after the Hallstatt plateau yeah. as well. So and we talked about this in our last um interview basically where we're talking about how that, you know, if there was pull shift, then it would affect radiocarbon dates. And we talked about scientists know that radiocarbon dates aren't all perfect and they're trying to do their best to make corrections for where anomalies have occurred and so that they distinguish between radiocarbon years and actual years and they're trying to do correlations but we're still in the infancy of that science so what i'm saying is that there is a major issue during that hallstatt plateau between about 400 bc and 800 bc and that i think a lot of things that we get dates for like the, the entire region has gotten overlapped and we have a radiocarbon dated set of history and a historically dated set of history that actually are the same thing um but but have gotten tacked onto each other like this and and i'll talk about that later 
And yeah, I mean, because it, it looking looking at this Hallstatt graph, it seems like the everything's wonky from about like the radiocarbon determination of about 2600, 2600 before present to, I mean, twenty two hundred. So What's the x axis determined by? So so yeah, can you explain? So it's the the y axis is radiocarbon determination, and then the x axis is calibrated date. Yeah. So one is true, the true date. And one is the radiocarbon date that is given. What, what, what do you mean true date? Yeah, can you explain that? So one one of them is the date that the machine gives us when we actually get the amount of radiocarbon that was in it, right? And we find the half-life. The other one is the date that actually it actually happened at. So let me give an example. So we, we get a sample from Israel, and that sample radiocarbon dates to 800 BC. Um, but we have a historical record that says that hey, this is from um, this is from a city that we know was sacked by the Babylonians or maybe by the Persians in 400 BC. So I historically, see. we know that this happened at 400 BC, and yeah, our radiocarbon date has given us a date of 800 BC. So there's something. Is that wrong. could they just be using old materials or something like that? Well, so if if it was a single date, right, that gave us an anomalous date, then we might think just like I said before, like maybe this is corrupted. Maybe there is some groundwater that made its way through the ground and, and brought in some radiocarbon from the limestone around it. But when they find an entire layer in a site, like maybe we're studying Lachish or some you know, well-known city in Mesopotamia, and we have really good records, and date after date after date is giving us the wrong date, and some of them are sealed charcoal dates, and some of them are wood dates, but they're all giving us this consistently mm. wrong date. And in fact, multiple cities, we see it. Then we realize, hey, no, there's a problem here with the atmosphere. It's not contamination. It's not a marine reservoir effect, which is another thing that can make radiocarbon dates be off because the Mediterranean itself can bring in and corrupt dates because it, it actually has an evaporation rate with different levels of radiocarbon. Um, so you get little isolated regional problems but they find this all over and so they realize hey this is like a major problem with atmosphere that makes sense that's wild um that but that's really so okay um are there any time points where the radiocarbon date gives the actual date and you don't have to make the adjustment or do you yeah. always have to make okay no so there absolutely are like in fact all the time from the time of christ to about 400 bc radiocarbon dates seem to be spot on with, within 50 year window. And so how much of that is that that's just when we got really good at recording history? There is some of that. And, and not only that, so that, that brings a big point, right? Because the only place that we're able to even know that there is something like the Hallstatt Plateau is the Middle East where there's good dates. Whereas in the New World, in the Americas, we have no historical records. So if we get a date and it says 800 BC, we have absolutely no way of knowing whether it's right or wrong. Okay, than- and so with the Halstead Plateau in and so the Halstead Plateau is mostly in the Mesopotamia? It was discovered in Mesopotamia, and, and that's the only place we have records well enough to to prove that it's a thing, to prove that our radiocarbon dates are wrong. And so we have no idea if it's also happening in Europe and in Mesoamerica. Exactly. And, it could oh, be global. It could be global, crazy. like the entire Earth's atmosphere could have had a carbon spike in it, or perhaps maybe it was just the, the Mediterranean. Maybe a volcano erupted and that volcano dumped a massive amount of ash in the Mediterranean. And so then the surface layer of the Mediterranean now had radiocarbon diffused um, carbon dioxide in it that then evaporates in the atmosphere. And then for a couple hundred years before that water has a chance to mix, it corrupts all the dates downwind from the, the sea. Like that kind of thing happens. And so as like a geoarchaeologist, right, kind of, like I said, my, my specialty is kind of like thinking about those things on how the earth systems are interacting with archaeology. Have you looked at any eruptions that, you, that we can put a finger on? Um, yeah, the literature has, has some. They suggest a few of them even for the Hallstatt. I think that the big ones they think are in Iceland. Um, I suspect, though, that there was probably something closer. Like Italy has a lot of, um, anyway, this, this gets into things that I've, I've wondered. Like I've wondered if, if Santorini, right, with this massive era eruption that we know that entered the, the late bronze period, is it possible that we're dating it wrong? 
like the Mino- the Minoans. And, yeah, yeah, and the major eruption that, that destroyed the Minoans. The Bronze Age collapse. Yeah. So we date it at. Uh, I mean, God, it keeps changing, right? But I'm trying to remember what what it dates to. Somewhere between. I want to say like fifteen hundred. Yeah. yeah, I think it's around fifteen hundred. BC. So how do we know that that's right, though? How do we know that it's really fifteen hundred BC? How do we know that we haven't completely um, done our? How do we know our history isn't isn't wrong in some major ways? 